What's up everybody, it's Tony with Hippie and the Tech and today we are gonna talk about RVing in the snow. We've had some personal experience with this. We got stuck in Durango, Colorado once, which is kind of like a bowl, and it got down to minus four, and thank God we had friends there because it it, it was, I don't think we could have got out of there. Uh, the, the roads were frozen, it, minus four is a bit much for your rig, you know, things start to freeze up. So they they let us in their heated horse barn, which was, which was really awesome. So here are some of the top things you can do to prepare yourself for RV travel in the snow. First, don't forget to like and subscribe. Please click the subscribe button, follow us, and we will make sure that we put out mediocre content every week. We'll try. All right, so one of the first things you want to look at is are you preparing to be in snowy conditions, you know, where the roads are going to be frozen, it's going to be really cold. If you're going to be, one of the first things that I'd suggest is actually getting tires designed for traction. A friend of mine, Anthony Damerall, he actually told me, listen, buddy, you're going to be driving up north quite a bit, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to put traction tires on your back, and we're going to put steering tires on your front. Having those is going to give me the security that I need driving around roads where I'm, I'm not really sure if they're frozen or not. You get that black ice, it creeps up on you. and. Hopefully, I'll never even notice. And the next thing we did is we put some high-powered LED lamps in our headlights. But what came with our rig was the old yellow-looking, orange-looking lights that you turned them on, and they they were they were lights by definition, but they didn't really do much out front. We could see just enough to not want to drive at night. So we put these new LED high-powered uh, lamps in the front, and, and man, we could we could see forever. Uh, and they also have uh, this this ability to kind of like shoot down to where there's a line across the horizon and so that way you're not blinding people that are that are on oncoming traffic so definitely LED lights will help you in blizzard type situations where you're having a hard time seeing another thing is adding fog lights uh, to the front of your rig for those special occasions where there's where there's fog or you're stuck in a blizzard. All right, so the next thing we wanna do is we wanna seal all the windows and doors, anywhere there's cracks and stuff. Uh, what this can do is let cold air in, but also can let a lot of moisture in. And when it's cold out and you're running uh, devices on the inside, heaters on the inside, or you're running your furnace, you'll notice that you'll get some condensation on the walls. And some stuff that you can combat with that, there's uh, little buckets of uh, moisture absorption, you hear that? So to combat that, you can get some moisture absorbers, which some of them come in buckets. Uh, you can also run a dehumidifier. Some people actually install window coverings, kind of like what you do when you're trying to reject heat, but that will also keep the heat inside your rig. You can get some Reflectix in, or some insulation and cut it to the size of your windows. Slides in there, you can roll it up and put it away when you're not using it. But the Reflectix actually works in the summertime as well as in the wintertime. Next thing you could do is use some heavy drapes. Um, that's not really a common thing because us RVers, especially full timers, we don't wanna stock a lot of stuff under our bays and, and have a bunch of stuff like that laying around. But um, you could put up some and this might sound a little trashy, but you can put up some blankets along the windows, especially the larger windows. Uh, and also you can insulate the floors. Now I'm not talking about going to Lowe's and buying a bunch of uh, uh, wall insulation and laying it on the floor. You can just get like a thick throw rug that you can use throughout the year and put that on your floor and that'll help insulate and uh, keep the warmth in. All right, let's talk about skirting. Now this is a big issue if you're a bumper pull or if you're a fifth wheel and you're staying uh, stationary or you're in an area where it's uh, awful windy, you wanna make sure that you have some skirting under your, under your rig to eliminate cold air from collecting under your rig. Now most class A's will have your flooring and then you'll have your bay area. So most of your tanks and your pipes and stuff are located inside of a you know, a, a heated area most times. Uh, some bumper pulls will have some of your piping exposed and you wanna make sure that that stuff is, uh, is covered from the elements. So let's talk about more of the RV plumbing. You wanna make sure that, especially your water line going to your pedestal, you wanna make sure that that doesn't freeze. And one thing you can do is get a heated hose. We have a uh, Freeze Band 2000. It sounds like something you'd buy on a, an infomercial at 2 a.m. But you want to make sure that 
your pipes don't freeze. So a couple, a couple things you can do with that. If it gets super cold out, you can actually open up all your cabinets in the in the evening and run your furnace. Now, some people say, well, I, I have a like a blue flame or I have a, a heat buddy. So if you're running that and it satisfies the thermostat and the furnace doesn't come on, that heat buddy is really only heating the inside where some RVs have winter packages and the furnace actually dumps down into the bay area and heats your tanks. You wanna make sure that if it gets super cold out, if it gets below freezing, you wanna make sure that you run your furnace, especially if it's piped down into the bay areas or near your tanks. Now your tanks, you wanna make sure that you're not dumping them regularly. You wanna have a lot of material in there. I'm using the word material. Uh, so it takes a lot longer to freeze. So um, just, plan on dumping your tanks, you know, look at the weather and see, okay, it's gonna be 32 degrees for three days, maybe hold on to it for a little bit and then dump after the, it starts to warm up. But you also can get some heat tape and wrap up some of your pipes that are exposed, but just make sure, and you know, if it's gonna get freezing and you don't have a electric heated water hose, fill up your tank. Fill up your fresh water tank, disconnect your water hose, let it freeze for a while, run your pump uh, on, your, on your rig, and when it gets back to above freezing, hook your fresh water back up and go back to normal. Now, one of the most important things that you wanna do is change the batteries in all of your safety devices. So, especially your CO2 sensors. If you're gonna be running a lot of propane appliances, you wanna make sure that your sensors are ready to let you know if there's any uh, dangerous buildup of CO2. All right, now the most important thing is make sure you go have fun. You know, RVing in cold weather is awesome. Me and my wife and kids, we, we actually love going out into the snow and, and, and hiking and of course making snow angels and, and all the fun stuff. So there's some things that you can do to prepare ahead of time to make sure that you're gonna have a great experience. So go ahead and do that. And again, like, subscribe and follow us and we will try to put out as much awesome content as we can. And I wanna give a shout out to Stacy Farley from You, Me and the RV. We had a killer week last week talking about YouTube and film and stuff. So make sure you go check out You, Me and the RV. Okay, here's the part where I turned the microphone off and didn't know and I wanna say thanks for watching. And if I forgot to mention anything, leave it in the comments below. And then I walked off the screen. Thank you.